Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we are doing a foundation review. So we are trying out Patrick Ta's new cream foundation that also comes with a powder. And here it is. I don't know why I didn't hold it up when I was introducing it, but whatever. All right, so the description of this is that it is a duo that includes a blendable medium coverage cream foundation paired with a satin finish powder. The cream formula is supposed to be good, I think, for oily skin, which yours truly definitely has, so I think we should be able to get a pretty good understanding of exactly how this formula will work. But it also has an air spun setting powder that blurs the appearance of pores to create a flawless looking skin-like finish. And now that it's taken me forever to open up this box, here we go. So I do have this in the shade Light Medium 2. Here is the typical Patrick Ta packaging that is super fingerprint prone. Yep, <laughs> okay. Just like his, um, I think his bronzer is like this too. I know that he has a blush that is like this because I have one of them where it's like the cream blush on top and then the powder on the bottom. So very, very similar packaging to that. I do think that this contains a little bit more product than like the blush and the bronzer because it's a foundation, so it should, right? So it's 0.32 ounces of cream, 0.14 ounces of powder, or nine grams of cream and four grams of powder. I don't know if this looks really dark. Uh, we'll just see what happens. All right, so I did just put primer onto my face. This is the Yensa Tone Up Primer, the Essential Glow, which you guys know is like my favorite primer of all times. I wanted to make sure that I didn't go with a too mattifying primer just because I feel like with creams, generally speaking, like if you have dry patches on your face, it'll really, really cling to those spots. So I was like, okay, let me try and like make sure my face is as hydrated as possible. I'm gonna be using one of my very, very trusty LaRousse brushes here. I'm going to go and air on the side of caution. So very, very thin layers. I don't wanna put on too much because I feel like cream foundations usually have a decent amount of coverage to them. It's been a while since I've tried a cream foundation. Oh, that's actually not too bad of a, of a shade match. And actually that's a bit more sheer than I expected. Okay, so I can use a little bit more. So let's keep going here. And I am not going to use a beauty blender. Usually when I do foundation reviews, I do like half of my face with a beauty blender and then the other half with a brush. But since it's a cream foundation, like I don't think you should ever use a wet sponge. Not ever, maybe to like smooth things out, but from like an application standpoint, I just don't, I don't think that I would. So this is the lightest layer of foundation that I can do. Maybe I'll go a little bit heavier now just to see if I can really pack on. Well, it's blending smoothly into my skin. Still have a little bit of redness peeking through. Let's do the same light layer over the rest of my face. I'm gonna kinda just speed through this very quickly. Finished the first layer of this cream foundation and actually it looks like pretty good. I feel like it covered my pores pretty decently. I don't think it's sinking into my lines too bad. I can see like a, like my normal amount of creasing right around my nose, like right here. You can kind of see that just like settling in there. So, but that's pretty normal. I feel like with my foundations, like, you know how people are like, oh, the foundations are settling into my fine lines and stuff like that. That is my trouble zone. And actually the shade doesn't look like that's pretty good. It's pretty good fit. Obi clearly agrees. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put on the rest of my makeup. We'll see how everything layers on top of this and we will be right back. Now that I have concealer on, this is usually when I would start powdering down my face. So now we are going to test out the powder in here. Um, let me go ahead and use a clean brush to do this. So I'm kind of wondering like, do I wanna try putting it underneath my eyes for setting down my concealer or do I only wanna do it for the foundation? Or should I do it for both? Because I feel like I don't know, I use two different powders when I'm, <laughs> sounds very like excessive, but I do use two different kinds of powder when I am setting down my concealer versus my foundation. And so the one that usually goes underneath my concealer is more of a more like very, very finely milled powder so that it doesn't just like sink in everywhere. Whereas the rest of my face, I'm kind of just like, eh, I don't care as much. So they do say that it's supposed to be a super finely milled powder. So I'm gonna try it underneath my eyes and we will use it as our all over face powder as well. So there's just a, quite a bit of kick up. I'm gonna tap off all of that extra here and let's see kind of, let's see what happens here underneath my eyes. I do have on the Maybelline Age Rewind Concealer, which is one of my favorite concealers. 
yeah, I don't like it for underneath my eyes. It's also not super brightening, which makes sense because it's supposed to be a powder that you can use specifically for this foundation shade to set down your face. Um, but I can tell you right now, I do not like it underneath my eyes. That is literally, yeah, no. It's emphasizing texture right here. It's making it kind of look python-y, which normally my under eye concealers do not do that. So what the heck does that mean? It's like scaly. It looks scaly. Yeah, python like like a like a like a snake. It's like scaly, right? No? Okay. Do, maybe why a python specifically? It's that's what I thought of. No <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Moccasin. But yeah, seriously, right here, it looks it looks a little bit dry underneath my eyes. I don't like this as a under eye powder. I can tell you guys that right now, which is fine. You know, it's not like he really markets it as that. So can't really blame him for, for something like that. Let's go ahead and use this on the rest of my face to just kind of set down that cream. I'm sure it'll work just fine as like an all over powder, you know? That seems to have set down my face pretty well. I have a little bit of redness that's peeking through again though. I don't really know why. I'm almost wondering that if I, if I set it down, I probably shouldn't have done it in swiping motions. I should have done it in like just pressing on to my skin motions, but it is picking up a little bit of that. Do you see that? Hmm. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and actually apply the rest of my face and then we'll be right back. All right, folks, the rest of my makeup is on. So let's talk a little bit about our, I don't know, just first impressions of how everything went on. Everything went on very, very smoothly. All of my powder products blended in really, really nicely on top of the Patrick Ta powder. No complaints there. I am curious to see how this wears throughout the day. They don't actually market this as like a long wear foundation. They don't say anything about that. And so for my own purposes, I'm just curious to see if it's going to last through the day. And we do have a pretty extensive day coming up because I do need to give my dogs um, baths and then a bunch of other household cleaning chores and stuff like that. So I will be running around. I'm also planning on eating a burrito for lunch. So I'm excited for it. So I thought I would mention it. A couple of other things I wanted to know about the powder is, yeah, I really hate this as an under eye. Uh, powder. I just think it looks, it made everything crease underneath my eyes. So I don't really like that. I thought it was fine for an all over face powder. I don't think it's going to replace any of my favorite pressed powders right now, like the ColourPop Hello Fresh powder or the Charlotte Tilbury airbrushed powder. Both of those are still like just top tier powders. It's not as good as those if I'm being totally honest, but it's not, you know, it's not the worst. It did fine setting down the creams. So for those of you that are new to this channel, when it comes to my reviews, I try it out at the beginning of the week uh, and then I wear it for the entire week, review it, test it, put it through all of the different kinds of circumstances uh, that a person could possibly go through in a week uh, and then come back at the end of the week to give you guys my final thoughts. So yeah, I'll bring you guys along for the rest of the day and then we'll see, you know, at the end of the week what I think about it. But so far, I mean, it looks pretty good. My face looks this looks good. So yeah, we'll see. All right. See you guys in a little bit. Hey everyone. Welcome to our first check-in. We are now three and a half, four hours into wearing this foundation. Uh, and also washed my dogs, had tacos for lunch instead of a burrito. I ate the whole taco plate, like beans and rice and everything. And it was so delicious. I don't know that I really needed to tell you that though or that I should have eaten the entire taco plate, but that is exactly what happened uh, about two hours ago. So anyway, the foundation shockingly looks actually like better than when I first put it on. I think with cream foundations, you can't really get away from it looking like you're wearing foundation or you're wearing makeup. I think with some liquid foundations, you can kind of get away with like, ooh, like might be her skin, might not be, but with cream foundations, it's always gonna look like you're wearing foundation. So there is that, but I will say like when I first put it on, it felt and looked just a little bit cakey when I was done filming that first part of this video. I looked in the mirror and I was like, mm, I'm not sure if I really like it. But the more and more that it sits on my skin and kind of works with um, like my skin's oil and stuff, it's starting to look much, much better on my face. It definitely still looks like I'm wearing foundation, but 
it looks, it doesn't, it's losing that like cakey quality, like it's becoming a little bit more natural. So here you go, here are some close-ups of my face. Obviously I'm having my typical trouble zone right here around my nose where things are creasing, but everything looks pretty good except for my under eyes. It looks like garbage. Uh, yeah, I hate this powder for under eye, under eye setting powders, pure shit. So yeah, we're never doing that again. But anyway, um, other than that, everything looks, everything looks good. So yeah, we'll see how this continues to wear for another four hours, I'm thinking, for the next check-in and then right before bed. So we'll see. See you guys in a bit. Hey everyone, it is now our second check-in. It is now 5.30, which means that I've had this foundation on for about six hours and I've been pretty busy moving around, doing a lot of things. Um, admittedly, it's not super hot, so it's not like I'm like, it's not like humidity and sweat is an issue today, but this foundation looks good. For six and a half hours, I'm not noticing anything breaking down. It's actually like, it looks really good. The only areas that I'm noticing is right here. I'm gonna give it time to focus a little bit. You see that little patchiness here? So I would actually say, and I wonder actually if we've got a little bit of a dry patch right, right here. If you have dry skin, I don't know if this is a foundation that I would recommend to you because I do just feel like with cream foundations, man, the second your skin gets a little bit dry, a little bit textured, it just, I think it would really cling to it. So that's the only thing that I, I'm coming out of this with right now. But other than that, like this looks, this looks pretty good, right? For six hours, I looked in the mirror and like, yeah, some of it is coming apart, but it doesn't look, I mean, it doesn't look like one of those foundations where, you know, when it starts coming apart, you're just like, Oh my god, your face looks so bad. So, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty impressed. What do you guys think? I don't know. Go. All right, I'll see you guys at the end of the day. All right, everyone. Well, we are now at the 12-hour mark. So, we have had this foundation on for 12 hours. Obviously, that's what the 12-hour mark means. You can definitely see that the foundation has definitely removed itself from here. I have been blowing my nose. Um allergies seem to have gotten to me kind of like in the evening time. So, and then you can definitely see where some of my bronzer, where I've like touched my face like right here, you can see pretty heavy like marks from just where the foundation really has been wearing off. So, anywhere where I have touched my face, obviously, I don't think cream foundations are really known either for being transferred resistant but just something to be aware of however if you look at my forehead actually things look pretty good so honestly for a 12 hour mark for a foundation that doesn't even claim to be a long wear foundation like this is uh it's not bad it's not it's definitely not the worst that I've ever tried before so in terms of first impressions I like this foundation so far. I liked it way more at the three hour mark than I did even at the beginning. And so that's fine with me, you know, if a foundation is gonna look better and better as you get through the day and then it reaches its breaking point around the 12 hour mark, like that's, that's good. That's really good. So, all right, I am going to head to bed Monday morning, bright and early, lots of meetings. So yeah, but I'll be testing out this foundation for the rest of the week. I will put it through some workouts um, and I will come back at the end of the week to let you guys know my final thoughts. But so far, it's not bad. It's not bad. I'm kind of impressed. So yeah, see you guys soon. Bye. Hey everyone, it is now Saturday, so let's do our final thoughts on the Patrick Ta Cream Foundation. A couple of things that I wanted to know, and I actually have my notes here. Uh, the first thing is that when you are using this foundation, if you decide to go get it, make sure that you use more of a like fluffy foundation brush, one that's not as densely packed. I actually found that throughout the week as I use different brushes, this was my favorite way of applying it. This is actually from NYX. This is their 03 foundation brush, and it just gave me a a much less cakey looking application so I actually really like how my foundation looks today right now I am currently wearing the Patrick Ta foundation and it looks like it looks solid so um, would highly recommend using something that's just a little bit fluffier not so dense the other thing to know about this foundation and this is the part where I'm kind of eh about it is mostly just because I do really require a long wear foundation I tend to get really oily throughout the week when I'm stressed out at work and when I'm like in meetings. And then I'm also a little bit of a face toucher. So particularly uh, on Zoom or something like that, I tend to be one of those people that's like constantly just like 
when things go wrong, my face is just like, it sinks into my hands. And so this foundation is not transfer resistant in any sense of the word. So if you are a face toucher, if you are prone to getting just like more and more oily throughout the day, this one is just, it's not gonna be a long wear foundation on you. And the third thing that I wanted to say too is that from a foundation standpoint, Ah, so the cream foundation is just, it's a little bit less coverage than what I normally find in cream foundation. So I do feel like I was using a little bit more, like I had to add an extra layer wherever I had a little bit of redness. And by a little bit, I mean like a lot. <laughs> so for me, I just feel like I am going to go through this relatively quickly. If you actually look at the pan already, like there's a sizable dent in it and you know, I, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm a little bit like, oh, I don't know if the value was really there. And I did look online finally, and I saw that a, a lot of other people kind of felt the same way where they were like, Ugh, I feel like I'm going through this really quickly. And it is $52, so it's expensive. So I wanted to just recommend to you, if you are someone who needs full coverage and you want a product that's going to last you a lot longer, I would recommend the Hourglass Foundation Stick. This one is high, high coverage, high pigmentation. You only need to use a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And I would say this one is actually just as good as the Patrick Ta Foundation, if not actually a little bit better in terms of longevity. But final thoughts on the Patrick Ta Foundation. I enjoyed it. I'm going to use it up mostly just because I don't like to waste products, but would I purchase this again? Probably not. I just need foundations that are a little bit more long wear, um, particularly ones that are as transfer resistant or transfer proof as possible. Those are just my personal preferences. And so if you're someone who's looking for a medium coverage cream foundation, I mean, I'd give it a shot. The other thing I wanted to talk about for that powder is that it does fine it's not the greatest powder in the entire world. There's so many other face powders out there that I like more than this one. And so because of that, because of the price, because of the fact that like it's not exactly what I will look for in a foundation, I'm not gonna repurchase it again. But hopefully you found this review helpful. And if you liked it, please feel free to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching, bye. Hey everyone, welcome to our third check-in. Um, no, not third check-in, what am I saying? This is the third time filming the first check-in, okay.